bless the Lord for his mighty power and his authority yet in the earth. I don't know about you, but all of us are human beings. Yes. Sometimes we feel superhuman, but then we come to the reality that we're just human. Yeah. But I thank God that God is able to fortify us. The Lord is able to give us strength when we need it for whatever we need. Right. I was thinking the other day that as a believer, it is very easy and quite often we get weary. We get tired and oftentimes the tiredness is not necessarily in your spirit so much as it is sometime in your body. Yeah. Trying to do and trying to maintain and trying to cope with what life hands you. Have you ever been handed some stuff in your life that you said, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And then supernatural strength is made available to you where you know not of except it be God. And God is able to strengthen you who at the time is are weak and without strength. And he will infuse you with power that you know can only come from on high. Yes. I'm glad about it. I'm glad that he still comes to you in the midnight hour. Amen. I'm glad that he can come to you in the daylight while you're walking in the streets or while you're riding in a car, riding on the bus or whatever you're doing. God will just visit you. Yeah. He'll make himself known and give you the strength to make it because you don't know what's around the corner. You don't know what you have to deal with next. But I'm glad that we serve a God yes, who knows the left from the right, the beginning from the end, and knows all that we may or may not have to face. What a mighty God, what a mighty God. we serve. Yes. You have to be a fool not to serve God. Yes. Because in serving God, I have such an umbrella. I have such a a keepsake. I have such a strength over my life yes. that God will keep me from danger seen yes. and unseen. Yes. Uh -huh. Keep me in a, in a place of victory. Yes. Keep me in yes. a place yes. of strength. Yes. Keep me with a mind staying on Him because I trust in Him regardless of what I may have to go through. Isn't that good to know? Isn't that good to know that God is faithful? Oh, Lord, I think about David. David knew God was faithful when he watched the sheep as well as he went when he was king of Israel. Yeah. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. He said, I shall not want. David knew God was faithful. And I'm glad that same faithfulness that God afforded David is mine because I believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. There's no other name given among men. No other name. Whereby we might be saved. Yes. Okay. But by the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in his name. Deliverance. There's yes. power. There's authority. Yes. There's grace. There's yes. strength. Yes. There's help. All that I need oh, is in yes. Jesus. Yes, Lord, it is. Lord. yes it is. And I'm glad about it. Yes. I'm glad. I'm glad he didn't show up with a half a bag. I'm glad he showed up with all I need. Yes. Amen. Amen. He didn't have to do it all. He didn't have to do it once, and he didn't have to come back and finish it up. He did a finished work. It was yeah. once and done. And when he showed up, all I needed yeah. was in him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad about that. Yeah. I ain't got to look nowhere else. Ooh, Don't have to find a substitute nor a copy. Right. He's it. Amen. He's it. He's my help, and he's my strength. Yes. Oh. If you have your Bibles handy, if you have your Bibles handy, bless the Lord, we want to encourage you just for a moment. I'm glad, and I said this, and I think it's worth repeating. I'm so glad that we can hear the Spirit of God, and the Word of God can speak to us, and God can confirm His Word, because we have a multiplicity of voices yes, speaking to us today. Amen. Everybody has the answer, but everybody don't know Jesus. Yes. But if you know Jesus, he is the answer. Amen. I've been around the block a couple times. I've been back and forth. 
I've tried different things. I understand this. I always find my way back to the truth. Yes, the yes. only truth is in Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. Second Timothy, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, in your hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man strive also, if a man, and if a man also strive for master trees, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that labor must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we also, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abide in faith, he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Amen. I might use for a word this morning it would be the cost. The cost to win. The cost to win. I was thinking the other day, uh, I don't know if I was walking to the mailbox, I don't know what I was doing, but I was thinking how strenuous and how tiresome it is at times to, to have the victory as a believer, or should I say, maintain a victorious attitude or maintain your strength when so much seems to weigh upon you. Come on. I thought about that. I said, you know, this is not kids' play. Yeah. This is the real deal. Oh, yeah. As a believer, we are faced with so much stuff. We we do right, and oftentimes we receive wrong for it. At least it seems wrong. But yet, I thought about this. I said, you know, it takes a lot to stand in having done all the stand. It takes a lot to take God at his word and remain faithful until God brings it to pass. It takes something. It's just not something uh, uh, you can just say and it happens all the time. It's something that we have to endure and we feel the stress of it in our spirit. We feel the stress of it in our bodies. We feel the stress of it or the or the, the results of it, even in our workplace and in our families, because it really costs the believer something to win. Because when you read God's word, God has already finished the battle. It's over. It's done. All we're doing is walking in the victory. Yeah. But in the process of the maneuvering to the victory, in the process of getting to the point where we finish our course, it gets tiresome. It gets weary. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad that God is able to give us the needed grace because who, who here don't need grace? Huh? Who here don't need the favor of God, the unmerited blessing of God on your life when you are maintaining faithfulness? When you are maintaining a mindset so that you win and not lose. Yeah. It's a struggle. It's a battle. It's not simple. Not so it's times I think we make it simple. We figure if we sing a few songs, if we wave our hand, if we say hallelujah enough, then we'll get through it. Sometimes you can't even say boo, less more hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can't even get your mouth open just to give him a praise. And oftentimes 
the praise is not even from your natural lips. It has to come from your spirit. Yeah. There has to be a praise. There has to be something that, that generates. And just like Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, if you drink the water, I'm going to give you. Yes, he said, you never thirst. I know you're thinking about filling this bucket up with some natural water from Jacob's well because you're religious. But he said, if you drink the water that I'm about to give you, he said, you'll never thirst. Yes, yes. Have you ever been in a dry place yes. and God has wet your lips yes. with the thirst, with the refreshing of his spirit? Yes. Yes. That's the kind of strength that God will give you that when you're in a desert place,
you can't correct the problem unless you get in the problem to bring about the correction. Yes. So Elijah, he, I guess he felt, well, listen, they're going to have to worry about no water. I'm going to be fine. God's going to keep giving me what I need. I'm not going to have to struggle. But after a while, God said, listen, I'm going to dry up the brook because I don't want you to take your confidence in the stuff. I want your confidence to be in me. So that if I have to transition you, if I got to shift you, you got enough sense to go when I say go. Yes. You got enough sense to come when I say come. Yeah. Yeah. So the brook dried up. Yes. And Elijah was told by God that I got a widow woman in Zarephath, the next town over, that is going to bless you. Elijah goes to the next town, and this widow woman is making a cake yeah. and getting ready to warm it up for her and her son to die. Yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but it costs something to win. Yeah. Because God will do some crazy stuff that look like crazy. I mean, God, I done spelled it out and it still felt crazy. But you told me that she was going to be my blessing. Yeah. She ain't even got nothing to take care of herself. <laughs> but you said, she, this situation can't be a blessing because they don't have enough themselves. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so God says, I told you I was going to bless you. Yes, he did. So Elijah walks in, tells the woman, says, listen, he's a total stranger to her outside of the fact of his notoriety. He didn't know her personally. Yeah. So Elijah walks in and, and says, listen, before you make that last cake, he said, make one for me. Yeah. Now I can imagine any mother in here who are about ready to split a, a hoagie <laughs> for the last time. And here comes a prophet telling you, give me part of the hoagie. I'm bringing it down to us now. And tell them, give me part of it, and I'll bless you. I guess you said, yeah, right. You just want some of what I got. And amen. So the woman recognizing his notoriety, recognizing the fact that she had heard about him, she said, okay, and did, and made for the prophet first. Yes. And then split the rest with her and her son. Yes. Now the Bible says that as a result of her obedience, God had already prophesied that this woman would take care of Elijah yes. through the drought. Yes. Her meal basket never ran, ran out. Her water basket never, oil basket never ran dry. Yes. Why? Because God had prophesied a thing, and part of the correction was that the blessing was going to be released through somebody that really within themselves was not able to bless you. Yeah. See, God will take that thing you don't even understand and cause them to be a blessing yeah. in your life. Yeah. Stop trying to figure it out. If God said it, yes. that settles it. If God spoke it, expect it to come to pass. Yes, 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 yes. So God used a widow woman who had nothing to be a conduit for blessing. See, God will use that which is nothing yes. on the surface as a conduit for blessing. The very thing you thought was damaging the very thing you thought would take you out, God used it to bring you back. Yeah. Glory to God. Have you ever thought that God was through with you? Have you ever thought that God was tired and then God will speak a blessing over your life and let you know, listen, I just started. I like the fact that Elijah was so moved by what the widow woman did and then later on he was running from Jezebel and the interesting part is he thought he was the only one. Wait a minute, I just called a, 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 a curse, or should I say a, a 
correction, it was a curse, but a correction over the Israelites for three and a half years by the mouth of God. I know that I shouldn't be running from Jezebel. He ran, he hid himself, and he said, Lord, he said, I'm the only one left. And God had to let him know that you might think you're the only one left, but don't understand, don't forget that I took a widow woman who had nothing and multiplied what she had and took care of you through a drought that I declared. Yes. So God said, listen, I can take that which is impossible yeah. and make it possible. Yeah. All you got to do is understand there's a cause to win it. Yes. There's a cause. It might even sound crazy, but there's a cause to win it. Yeah. Some stuff you can't even tell for. Because it sounds so crazy. It sounds so unusual what God has spoken. If Elijah had went to another prophet and said, God said this, where a woman who has nothing is going to sustain me, they say, yeah, right. But God told him, I call a blessing on a widow woman to take care of you. There's a cost, beloved, to win life. Yeah. There's a cost to maintaining and sustaining. That's why we have to surrender to God that which is God, whether in our life, in our substance. Listen, God is our source, not our resource. He's our source. He gives us resources. Yeah. But he's the source by which all our resources come from. Amen. God's got our back when nobody else has our back. Nobody. Yeah. God is able to do for us exceedingly and abundantly above, above all that we ask or think. Yes, yes. Ephesians 3 and 20. Why? Because God is more than able. He's not a man that he should lie. God is more than able. God has already determined that we are winners. We are not victims. We are victors yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Uh, Elijah has already been uh, satisfied even before he got to the widow's house. Why? Because God had already spoken into existence that he would be blessed. Yes. God knew the heart of Elijah, that Elijah would take advantage of the word of God being right. See, that's what happens today. You've got to realize that the word of God is right all the time. Yes. Regardless of my situation. Yes. Regardless that the brook has dried up. As soon as your brook dries up, that thing that you've been bracing, that thing that is your substance, that thing that you trust in, God said, listen, it has to dry up in order for me to speak a blessing in your life. Yes. You got too, too much confidence in the, in, 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 in the sparrows and in the birds bringing you the meat. You got too much confidence in the water flowing in the brook. So I got to dry it up so that you can take confidence in me speaking a word over your life. Because you know you can't handle it. You think you can. But God said you can't handle it. You got to trust me. Elijah, you got to trust me. You're running from Jezebel, but you still got to trust me. You're going through the house of, of the widow in Zarephath, but you still got to trust me. Yes. It costs you something. Yeah. God will have you humble yourself yes. to the level that you never thought you could humble yourself. Amen. The Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, a lot of times we have to do some things that people don't understand, nor do they receive. But our position is to do it because God said so. Amen. Amen. You know you said you're sorry to folk, and really they should have been the ones that were sorry. But God calls you to say you were sorry. So you know it wasn't nothing but the grace of God that gave you the sustenance to be able to say it as well as do it. Because everything within you said, listen, I know you're sorry. No, you had to go and say, I'm sorry. Yes. Amen. Why? Because God will give you a grace. He'll give you a strength that you know is only of God. Can't even explain it. But you know God did it as well as you know God gave it. Glory to God. It's a cost to win. You got to be able to put up enough strength going through. You got to be able to at least take God at his word. As a Christian, I'm encouraged in the word of God that I'm a winner. I'm encouraged already that I'm a winner. I got to at least put up enough fight according to the attacks on my life. I got to be able at least to withstand. I got to be able at least to, to bear through whatever I got to go through. Yeah. Some stuff you get out quick. 
other stuff you got to go through. But I thank God that God is able to sustain us through it all. Yes. Because we've already won. Yes, yeah. man. We've already won. We've already won. Whether the battle is spiritual or physical, God considers a, a believer to be a victor and not a victim. Amen. Look at first, uh, just a few verses here. A few scriptures. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph yeah. in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Paul says this, God always causes us to triumph. Here's a man that was locked up probably more than a, than a, 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 a repeat felon. <laughs> Amen. But Paul said God always causes us always. to triumph. He said in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, uh, 57, but thanks be to God, yeah. which giveth us the victory in Christ our Lord. Amen. In Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. Thanks be to God that giveth us the victory. We already have the victory. Yes, We've yes, already yes. been placed in the winner's seat. Yes. We've already been placed in the winning round. God has already done it for us. It's already been maintained. It's already been sustained. All we got to do is believe it and receive it. And God said that's where you'll end up because you're already there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got to take him at his word. Philippians 4 and 13, very familiar. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Here's, here's, here's further proof in the scripture that even though we are at odds with the world, the world is not our friend, we are in a battle, we are in a struggle, we are expected to rise to the challenge, even though the world hates us, we are still expected to be victorious. Even though the world can't stand us, we are still expected to stand. Look what the writer says here in Romans 8, 36. As it is written, as it is written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Come on. We are counted as sheep yes. for the slaughter. Sometimes God will walk you into stuff, and if not for the grace of God, you lose your life. Yes. Come on. But he said we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yes. But Paul says, nay, in all these things, nay, no. we are more than conquerors yes. through him that loved us. Yeah. Woo! Come on. Cost the win. Glory yeah. to God. You've Jesus. had it hard, I've had it hard. You, We've had it tough, we've all had it tough. Yeah. Get in line. Everybody's got a problem. Yeah. Everybody's got a situation. Yeah. Right. But it doesn't make us any less a winner. That's right. It doesn't make us any less victorious. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through, you don't know what I'm going through, but guess what? God will bring us through it all. Yes. Yeah. Amen. He'll give us the grace to get through. Hey, that's why we pray one for another. See, that's why the enemy likes to keep something going on in the body of Christ so he can separate the prayers of the saints. He can separate the unity of the saints. Because if there's division, he said there's every evil work. So God says, listen, keep on praying one for another. When the Holy Spirit brings somebody's name to your spirit, pray for them. Yes. You don't know what they're going through. Yes. But understand this, you got to liken yourself like them and say, listen, if they're struggling, I'm struggling too. I better remember them and pray. Amen. 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 I don't know what you're going through, but when God brings your name, I said, Lord, bless them. Amen. Do whatever they need. God, fix it for them. Show up and show out. Yes, sir. Amen. Hold them up. They might be sinking. Just like Jesus reached down and picked Peter up when he was walking on the water to Jesus. I need some time to pray and somebody call my name out so he can pick me up yes. when I'm sinking. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, the devil will make you think that don't get rocky, it gets rocky. Oh, yes. But we still are able to swim and not drown. Amen. We still are able to walk, amen, and not fall. Amen. Even if we're falling over, God is able to give us the grace to pick us up. Yes. I'm glad about that. Amen. I'm glad about that. Because really, people, they have this facade that you never fail. I understand this. Failure is what it takes to get the victory. Yes. There are some times we fail. Had we not failed, we've not known where we were. And once we failed, we realized we could get up and there was somewhere to go. Yes. See, because many people sit and wallow in their failure and not recognize that by the grace of God, they can get up. Yes. By the grace of God. Glory. Jesus. 
they can get up. The cost of winning is not automatic. You gotta strive, you gotta strive to be victorious. Look at our text here. Bless God, look at our text here. Thou therefore, my son, Paul often and, and repeatedly spoke to Timothy, 1 Timothy as well as 2 Timothy, two letters to his son in the gospel. He said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong that is the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He said, actually commit the word that I've said to you, the faithful men that they can teach others. He said, endure hardness. As a good soldier, don't allow your feelings to be worn on your sleeve. Don't allow yourself to be so sensitive that you distract from the fact that God gives you grace to stand. Yes. God calls us to be strong and not weak. Now, even in our weakness, our flesh, God still gives us the needed strength to be strong. I know he's able. So because I know he's able, I have strength to do what he's asked me to do, yes. even though I myself am weak. Yes. Amen. Yes. I couldn't do it. I can't. Glory to God. If I could have done it, I would have got it done. Yes. But I can't do it. So God had to give me a strength that was not mine. Yes. yes. Thank you. Lord. That's right. That's right. So I got to be able to take something. See, the world wants us to be needy. The world wants us to be whiny. The world wants us to be dependent on a system that has always failed and can never bring victory. Amen. The world wants us to keep our eyes on the world and keep our eyes off of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There's a strength in the word of God that only comes through faith. Yeah. And when I exercise faith, I'm strengthened even though I'm weak. I yeah. may be laying there in pain, but in my spirit, I'm strong. Yeah. 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 In my spirit, I'm victorious. Yeah. Somebody asks you, how you doing? I'm all right. God is a good yeah. God. Yeah. Now, that only comes from a strength that is not mine. Yeah. Jesus. So he says, endure hardness as a good soldier. And he always likened it to a soldier because soldiers are trained for battle. Yes. Soldiers are trained to be strengthened as well as victorious in battle. Soldiers are trained to live on less and still be a soldier. Yes. So he told him, he said, endure hardness as a good soldier. He said, no man that uh, war entangles himself with affairs of his life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. He said, listen, if you're fighting a good fight of faith, don't entangle yourself with the world's mess. He said, because you'll, you'll, you'll get divided, and then you'll get between two loyalties, and what happens is you can't serve two masters. You're either going to serve one and hate the other. Or you're going to be drawn from one thing to another and be so full of compromise that you won't have the victory. Yeah. You got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Yeah. So if you don't have a stand for the word of God, you're subject to be fallen. You're subject to be roaming. You're subject to be like the scriptures, tossed to and fro yeah. with every wind of doctrine and never have a strong footing of faith in the word of God. Amen. Yeah. So you can't entangle yourself. You can't get so involved in the world that you lose your intimacy with Christ. Yes. Amen. God is still a jealous God. Yes. I know he made himself personal in the person of Jesus Christ, but God is still yes. a jealous God. Yes. He said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You want to win, don't have nobody before me. He told the Israelites in, and he told the church the same thing. He said, you shall have no other gods before me. Amen. If you love somebody more, you then you don't love me. Yes. Amen. Amen. God still requires that we love. Amen. See, because we'll let people, we'll let jobs, we'll let family, we'll put everything before God. And then want God to have our back when God is always in the back. God says, no, you got to put me first. I can't be second seat. I 
can't be in the background. I gotta be first. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. In winning, uh, but just a few keys to winning or at the cost of winning is that we have the advantage as believers. He told them to go hard and he's a good soldier because God has chosen us. And then he said, if any man strive for master trees in the fifth verse, he said, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Lawfully, He said, the husbandman that labor must be first partaker of the fruit. As you labor in faith, believe me, the results of your faithfulness will be tasted by you first. Yes. What does that mean, preacher? It means I reap what I've sown. No. And if I've sown seeds of faithfulness, yes. then I can expect to taste the seeds of my faithfulness. My, my, my. That's why the thing about a promise from God or the word of God, some things have come to us, but if you really look back on it, it took time for it to come to pass. Yes. <laughs> but God rewarded your faithfulness. Yes. You waited on God because of God's word, and you trusted the fact that God cannot lie. Amen. So the point is, is that the husbandmen that labored, I'm not laboring, I'm not believing, I'm not walking in faith for nothing. Amen. I expect to receive the harvest of life, of health, of strength, of wisdom, of courage, of conviction, whatever I have shown in faith believing, yes. I expect to be a winner and receive it because God has promised it that the husband yes. that labors, yes. the father that works at it, when you've been faithful over a few things, yes. God has promised yes. that I'll make you ruler over many. Yes. The reason why the blessings seem to come your way is a result of your labor. Yeah. The reason why the doors have been opened in your life is a result of your obedience. Yes. Yeah. Expect it. Expect. Look for it. We have the advantage. We are in a winning place. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We are in heavenly places on earth. Yeah. Yes. God has placed us yes. in an advantage. We have the advantage. We are not beneath, we are above. Yes, sir. We are not behind, we are in front. Yes, we have the advantage. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We won, we win. Yes, we know the end. Yes. Oh, yes. We have the strength. We have what we need. Come on. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, listen, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us yes. with all spiritual blessings in Christ. The Word of God is able to bless us as well as sustain us, give us the victory because our rest and our confidence is in Him. We are sitting in a seat of advantage. Yes. Yes. We are sitting in a seat of victory. Nobody can take it from you. Come on. Why? Because God has positioned you eternally in a place of blessing. Yes. That's why salvation comes by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come by works. It doesn't come by what you can do or what you will do. But rather it comes by faith, believing. And when you believe in Jesus Christ, then God is able to reward you because you are faithful. Yes. God doesn't reward the unfaithful. Amen. There's no benefit of being unfaithful. But when we become believers and walk in faith, believing and grow. Amen. The challenges of life, the things we have to go through, God rewards our faithfulness. See, sometimes we're surprised because he blesses us. Sometimes we're surprised because he kept us. But that's all part of the husbandman laboring is the first partaker of the fruit. Amen. Amen. If I've learned patience, yes. then God will reward me with the strength to be patient. Amen. Amen. If I've learned wisdom, then God will give me the wisdom to know wisdom. Yes. If I've learned love, God will cause me and give me the strength to be loving. Amen. Why? Because a husband and that labor. Amen. I've shown faithfulness in my labor. Just like a farmer sitting here tilling the, tilling the ground, expecting of that which he has planted to bring forth the harvest. There's no fa a farmer that plants a seed and does not expect him to bring forth a plant. That's why he sits there and tills the ground. See, you think God ain't heard you, but all you gotta do is 
keep telling the time, glory to God. Partaker of the fruit. Amen. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it won't happen. Yes. If you labor, God will reward your labor. Yes, He will. Endure hardness. That's how you learn. One of the hardest things to do to me as coming up as a kid was farming. I didn't like it at all. I'd rather, I'd rather cut wood than go out in the garden pulling weeds, <laughs> digging holes. Got gathering stones, getting stoned. <laughs> Amen. It was work. It was labor. But come about Thanksgiving, and we sit there at the table, and all that good food on the table, it wasn't automatic, but it was a product of our labor. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. Amen. Amen. We had more stuff in the freezer. Amen. Because of the abundance as a result of our need. Amen. The cost for win. God says, listen, don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Look what he also says here. Not only do we have the advantage, we, we have an adversary. We have an adversary and we ought to expect a struggle. I didn't say defeat, but we ought to expect a struggle. Look what it says here, um, seventh verse. Consider what I say, the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember, Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. We have an adversary, beloved. We have the enemy of our soul, and his desire is to, is to uh, uh, abort the plan of God in your life. So expect struggle. It doesn't mean that struggle brings defeat, but expect struggle. Amen. Expect it to be feast as well as famine. Expect it. Look for it. Why? Because that's the kind of times we live in. That's what the world does. The world goes through its highs and lows, but God gives us the grace to maintain a level of confidence and a level of peace where we know that regardless of whether the sun shines, I'm fine. Yeah. Regardless of whether there's rain, I'm fine. Come on. Because I'm being sustained by God. My strength is in Him. I'm already a winner. I'm already waiting because God has promised to do for me what I cannot do for myself. Yeah. 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 Look at this, Sam. Look at this. He says in Ephesians 6 and 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because we have an adversary that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not. It does. Understand this. You will wrestle. Don't think there won't be a struggle. You will wrestle. I know you got the advantage, but be prepared. Why? Because it's a cost to win. Come on. That's right. If, it, if anybody could do it, then we wouldn't need God. Amen. 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 But God has chosen us to be victors yeah. and not victims. Yeah. See, the world, I, 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 was, I, was, I was thinking about the world. The world always values a, uh, 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 winning with achievement. Man, huh? And success. But you can be successful and be a total failure. Bye -bye. And you can be successful and not know God. Amen. Amen. I, I was looking at a couple, it, it, it amazed me, I looked at a couple uh, quotes from different people. Winston Churchill said, he said, listen, success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. I thought that was a good one. The ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. I thought about that. I had to kind of laugh because it actually is somewhat true. Because if you don't get up, you'll stay down. If you don't encourage yourself, I wish he had to do the word of God in there. Because David said, listen, I encourage myself in the word of God. Huh? David would talk to himself. He said, oh my soul, why? within me. Yes. Hope thou in God. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. David knew what to say. Come on. And it wasn't just enthusiasm or happiness. Rather it was the word of God that 
stirring him to victory. Mickey Rooney said something. Somebody said, who Mickey Rooney? But Mickey Rooney said something. <laughs> he said, you always pass failure on your way to success. And I, I, I kind of have to agree with that. Because you will fail in, in your effort to do something. Yes, Come on. Yes. But that's the process of getting where you want to go. Come yes. on. Amen. Amen. That's why you get up, you wipe yourself off, and you keep on walking. Yes. And we have to do that even in the Lord. Just because it didn't work, you thought. You need to take God at his word again. Lord, speak again. Give me another word. What would you have me to do? God, maybe I missed it this time. Maybe I didn't hear it clear. Yes. God, speak again. Yes. Speak. Because God don't have a problem speaking yes. when you ask. If we heard it all the first time, then the Bible would probably be about 10 chapters. But God had to do 66 books in order for us to hear it. Amen. Amen, amen. I love that because the, the world always talks about success. We're talking about victory. We're talking about winning because you can be successful and not have a victory. It costs the winning. Yes, it does. It costs to win. We have an adversary. The enemy goes about seeking who he may destroy. Amen. But we have the victory in Christ Jesus. Yes. It costs something to win. Look at the rest of the verses here. He says, listen, in the, in the 11th verse of 2 Timothy 2, he said, It is a faithful saying, for if we are dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, with, suffer we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Not only have we been given the advantage, and not only do we have an adversary, but we have been made accepted by God. We have been made accepted by God. Ephesians 1 and 6 says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted, in the beloved. We have already been blessed. We have already won. God already knows our position. He already knows our stats. The difference between being successful and being a winner is that we know what's at the end. We know we've already arrived at the end. We're sitting in a place of victory. We've already received the reward. We've already been patted on our back and told it's a good job. Yeah. You've done well. Glory to God. We have the victory, beloved. Yes. Whether on earth or in heaven. Look at this now. I call something when last verse is here, beloved. First Corinthians 9 and 24. First Corinthians 9 and 24. Paul always liked to use a lot of analogies, and I love this analogy when he talks about running a race. Because really our walk is not a dash. Our walk is not a sprint. But rather our walk is a marathon with every intention of finish, yeah. with every intention of winning, winning at our pace, winning. See, the interesting part about being a believer, we win because we crossed the line. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Oh, yeah. We didn't win because we got there first. We win because we crossed the line. I like what Paul says. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. He said, therefore, they laid up for me a crown of righteousness that doesn't fail nor fade away. Paul said, I finished it. Now, Paul had not yet died. Paul had not yet laid his eyes or closed his eyes, but yet Paul knew he had already won. Yeah. He said, I fought a good fight. It's over. I'm done. I'm yes. finished. Yes, I've been faithful. Yes. So I expect God to do for me what he promised in his word. Yes. See, that's what faith will do. Faith will have you talking some stuff already done. Yes. And you know you haven't walked in it yet. But in your spirit, yeah. you know it's done. Bye, bye, bye. You know it's done. Yeah. I'm blessed. Somebody say, how you doing? I just know I'm blessed. Yeah, I'm believing God for a house. I'm believing God for my health. I'm believing God for a car. I'm believing God for a job. How do you know? In faith, believe it. I already got it. All I got to do is show up because God has already made the way. Yeah. See, if you don't yeah. believe those things already done, already made, yeah. already accomplished, you can't what you don't already believe. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. You have to see them things that are not yes, as is. though they are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus. I don't care what it looks like. I know what faith shows me. Faith shows me yeah. that I'm a winner. 
Faith showed me that I'm well. One of my, one of my buddies got a prognosis of, of uh, prostate cancer. He called me up, he said, man, they just told me I had prostate cancer. Man, my numbers are high, but he said, you know what? He said, I'm not believing that report. Yeah. Glory to God. He said, I'll see myself well. Amen. Two, three years later, guess what? He's still wet. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because he saw himself wet. Yes. He said, I'm taking God at his word. So we're in a marathon, not a sprint. Look what it says here, First Corinthians uh, 9 and 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain it. Now, it's interesting. I don't care if you've seen the Olympics who was just off, but everybody intends to win. There's nobody who trains for four years and, and denies their body and their mind for four years without an intention to win. Yeah. Nobody says, boy, oh, I hope I come in last. <laughs> Everybody intends to come in first. Everybody intends that I'm good enough to be in the race because I have the advantage. I know it's going to be a struggle, but I recognize it's a struggle. So for four years, guess what? I better struggle. And not only that, he said, I know I've been accepted. They sent me the paperwork. I'm already part of the race. But nobody goes into the race thinking, well, I hope I come in last. They already intend. Glory to God. You got to intend to win. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. I don't care if mama always fail. I don't care if daddy always fail. I don't care if your siblings always fail. If you intend. Subjection. That's by any means when I have preached to 
others. I myself should be a castaway. Paul said, listen, I'm not running this race for nothing. I keep my body under. I subject myself to the will of God so that folk don't look at me and say, listen, you ran for nothing. Yeah. Amen. No, Paul said, listen, I keep my body under so that nobody will even say that my life was wasted and I didn't do what God called me to do. So I, I, I pulled myself in so that God can be manifested in my life. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because he spoke something to me. And the only way it's going to come to pass in my life and in my living is that I walk in obedience to his word. That's what having faith in God is. Yeah. It's taking him at his word. It costs the wind to love it. And we are winners already. Yes, we are. God has done it and has declared it. We are victors and not victims. Endure hardness. Yes. Why? Because you're in a struggle. Yes. Amen. Don't win out. You can make it. Amen. I often wonder how people get the initiative to raise families without God, but they do it. Folk will go through struggles without God, but they do it. Yes. And then we get God and act like we can't do a thing. Yeah, we on. can't make it. We whine about everything. But God is not pleased with that because we've been given the victory. Yeah. We ain't got to worry about dropping no baton. We ain't got to worry about if you make it, do I make it? No, all we got to worry about is that at the finish line, he's sitting there waiting to hang your crown. Thank you, because it's not that you beat everybody. Well, it's that you cross the line. Yeah. Oh. Amen. Amen. So it's not about the impression. It's not about holding the flag and running around the the, uh, the, the track. Yes. But it's rather completing grace in faith, believing. There is a cost to win. And God has given us the needed strength to be all that we can be in Christ Jesus.